morning and welcome to Rising. Happy Monday. Thanks for tuning in. How was your weekend, Brianna? It was good. Restful. And you? Not so restful. <laughs> I was hosting a student libertarian conference, Liberty Con, in Washington, D.C. It was a lot of fun, lots of chatting, conversation. I was on, on my feet all weekend, so I'm a little bit hoarse, so b bear with me. I might make you do a lot of the heavy reading today. All right, well, I'll, well, I'll start us off then. How about that? <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, well, new NBC polling finds former President Trump ahead with a narrow but growing lead in a hypothetical matchup against President Joe Biden. Donald Trump has 47 percent of voter support, up one point since November, while Joe Biden has 42 percent support, minus two points since November. Just 37 percent of voters said they approve of Joe Biden's job performance thus far. That's compared to 60 percent who disapprove. That's the lowest approval rate at the start of a re-election year for any of the last four presidents. Among independents, Trump leads Biden in a general election matchup by 18 points, 48 to 29 percent. President Biden won South Carolina's Democratic primary this weekend with about 4 percent of registered Democrats turning out to vote. DNC Chair Jamie Harrison touted Biden's victory on MSNBC yesterday. Let's watch. So then, uh, uh, Chairman, should the president be concerned then with new NBC News polling showing his approval rating at an all-time low, 37 percent, and his narrowly tra uh, trailing Trump? Well, listen, uh, Jonathan, you know how I feel about polls. The polls <laughs> also said that Joe Biden was only going to get 69 percent of the vote in South Carolina yesterday. He got 96 percent. The best way to predict how people will vote is to look at how they're actually voting. Last night, Joe Biden beat the polls in South Carolina, and he got a major, major vote. And it was a major show of strength and enthusiasm for the president. And Meanwhile, over on Late Night, Georgia activist and rapper Killer Mike told Bill Maher why he won't be endorsing anyone this election season. My feeling is pick your policy, not your person. Find out <laughs> this is... This is not the Dallas Cowboys versus your favorite team. This is, this is the policies that will affect our generations for the next 20, 30, 40 years to come. So close your eyes, listen to the policies that are being pushed, and, and pay attention even to the people who don't have a chance of winning because they're going to say policies you may want to push. And I would say do that, but make it policy-based. Make so, it policy-based. So that means, therefore... That means I'm, I'm for black people and happy black history. But well, you're, not, you're not saying one candidate over the other? Hey, man, my ain't going to get me in no trouble tonight. <laughs> now, Killer Mike notably endorsed Bernie Sanders in the last round and has advocated for all of those big tent policies um, that do, frankly, disproportionately hurt working class, low income, and disproportionately black people in the United States of America, like uh, free education. Um, free. He was a big advocate of free trade schools in particular. I remember him getting into an argument, I think, on Bill Maher's show, where he says that uh, canceling student debt is for elites. And he says, well, my kid goes to trade school, and Bernie Sanders would cancel student debt for my kid as well. And it was a really, um, I think, informative and informed exchange. That being said, it is really interesting to see Bill Maher pressure Killer Mike to try to say what particular candidate he wants to endorse when he just finished saying that his priority should be and that he thinks people should be focused more on the policies that these individuals are representing. It's nice to know that Killer Mike is not part of the PSYOP. <laughs> sure. But Jamie Harrison, um, by comparison, arguably is. So the Biden team, the Democrats, are really pushing this narrative coming out of South Carolina, where there were absolutely no surprises that the overwhelming victory of Joe Biden indicates a level of enthusiasm for Joe Biden. But that seemed like a little bit of a coping mechanism around the fact that only 4 percent of South Carolina voters came out to vote at all, which might be an indication that Biden is just not a very popular president, even if he performs better than Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson because of largely name recognition. His approval numbers, you know, those polls we just showed are sobering. Um, the White House should be panicked. His reelection team should be panicked. Um, poll after poll shows him losing to Donald Trump. Um, it's closer in a few of the swing states. I think in Pennsylvania and Arizona, it's a little bit close, and that matters. Long campaign season still to come. We haven't heard very much from Donald Trump, and I wonder if things will change once we start regularly hearing from him, when the media starts covering him and actually allowing voters to hear what he has to say, if they're going to allow that at all. They seem to be inclined to think that's you know, reckless for democracy to actually let one sure. of the candidates speak and <laughs> dare his name actually appear on the ballot. Um, but uh, but I digress. These are look, it's just bad news for Joe Biden. Now, there were some good 
economic indicators um, in the last few days, um, a lot of healthy growth this uh, in this recent period of time. So Which maybe Donald Trump is taking credit for saying that the stock market sees that <laughs> right. I'm likely they to know. win and therefore they're preemptively showing good numbers in the stock market. Yeah. It's it's incredible stuff. I mean, look, there's a lot of ways that you can try to force these tea leaves in your uh, direction, but I want to make just a couple of points. It's notable that uh, they were doing victory laps around Marion Williamson for her defeat in New Hampshire, but in South Carolina, where she barely made an effort, didn't really invest in anything at all because it is such a, a state that goes so overwhelmingly for Biden. That is why the DNC rigged it, rigged the primary so that it came first uh, in, in, the, in, in, in line. Um, um, and was prioritized. She still managed to beat uh, Dean Phillips, despite him having much, much more in the way of resources, uh, getting almost twice as many votes as he did. And the important point to note is when we're talking about how uh, voter enthusiasm and whether or not the 4% is an indicator, is that in 2020, 16% of the electorate voted in the primary. And in 2016, 12% voted in the primary. And you can say, well, yes, there were more competitive primaries. There wasn't an incumbent Democrat in those years. And that's a fair point. But I still do think this, these statistics combined with some of the um, qualitative information we're getting from voters about their enthusiasm levels, plus the overall enthusiasm polls that we read up at top, are not a um, positive harbinger for Democrats right now. I saw someone on social media um, asking, when was the last time the Republican candidate for president led the Democratic candidate for president so consistently in polling for so long? And I, I think the answer is probably going to be Bush versus Kerry, yeah. frankly. Romney, there were some polls showing Romney up over Obama, um, particularly after the first debate, which Romney was perceived to have won by uh, quite a significant margin. They went back and forth, but it was close. We were talking like two points, three points. This is a consistent polling lead that Trump has had over Joe Biden for a while now, yeah. and it's holding for and now. Including in the swing states where it really yes. matters. Now, meanwhile, over on MSNBC, a roundtable of hosts grilled Biden challenger Dean Phillips this weekend, calling his campaign a long shot. Let's watch some of that. What is the red line for you to drop out of this race? And two, sure. if you are not successful, which the numbers currently say you will not be, will you endorse and support and work yeah. to elect Joe Biden? So, so here's, here's the mission. I'm using, I'm, I'm trying to build a model for Democrats to invite Americans to join us. We've lost huge swaths of this country because we stopped paying attention to them. Uh, former President Trump is paying attention. I'm going to invite independents. I'm going to invite Republicans. I showed up at a MAGA rally just to say hi. I was greeted with decency and friendliness from 50 people waiting in the cold in New Hampshire. Many of them voted for Barack Obama. Many of them Bernie Sanders supporters. Many of them had never been to a Trump rally before. So I want to make a model for Democrats how we can win. So this was a fascinating clip that I encourage people to watch in the, its entirety because the level of hostility that this panel had for Dean Phillips, you would have thought they were speaking to someone who had actually harmed someone in this world, <laughs> not just a random millionaire who was running for president. Now, I, I don't have a lot of identity of interest with Dean Phillips' actual stated policies, but the questioning that they put to him was hostile on the lines of, why are you doing this? No one knows who you are. And he's like, you're right. No one knows who I am. I have very little right. name recognition, in part because your network has granted a town hall to every Republican c candidate, but not to me, and of course, not to Marianne Williamson or anybody else who's running in the Democratic field. And where they should have been humbled, I think, by him offering that, I think, really constructive pushback, they weren't. And they seem to blame him for articulating something that is very true and a problem that is not going away for Democrats, which is most voters think that Joe Biden is too old to run. People who even like Joe Biden, people who voted for Joe Biden the last time around have serious concerns about his physical stamina and his ability to actually do the job. And Dean Phillips is basically holding himself out there as exactly like Biden, but younger, which again, for all, because of all my critiques of Biden, I would share those sure. with Dean Phillips. But that is a, that is a, that is a legitimate, that is a legitimate position to take. Particularly as a just an electoral strategy. Biden but younger won last time. Biden was younger yes. when he won. <laughs> yes. And it, there's something just fascinating to me about the rhetoric of so many Democrats and Democratic media uh, fixtures like Simone Sanders, like people on MSNBC and CNN, who talk about the stakes of this election in such, um, such dire terms about how democracy itself at risk. We will have no opportunity to, to rescue the country if Donald Trump is allowed to get into office again and do what he wasn't able to do the first time. Time. They talk about the stakes in an existential way. 
and yet they're not willing to consider any alternative strategy for maximizing their likely electoral success, even though poll after poll shows Joe Biden not faring well in a matchup with Donald right. Trump. They've not been able to just even experience, you know, I'm not saying replace him right. with some desperate gamble, but allow people allow an primary. actual primary, actual debates to see if someone like a Dean Phillips catches some momentum. So they, they make they make the stakes sound existential, but then they are unwilling to do anything that would that would maximize the case. Now, some I, probably on the conservative side, some people will say, well, they are doing, you know, go, willing to go to great lengths, but they're going to great lengths not in terms of having a better candidate, but in terms of trying to disqualify or jail Trump, and that's their actual strategy. That's the you know, go to the go to the end of end of the line to defeat him. It's not in terms of finding a better candidate. It's going to be these you know legal. Methods. I think that's right. And that is quite a gamble to take when you just have the option of having a Democratic primary. Mm. All right, stick around. We have a lot more rising for you coming up next.